Uh, my name is Luna. I work at the Career Center, and today we're going to talk about LinkedIn and how you can build um, your profile. Um, if you guys have any questions in your presentation, certainly feel free to interrupt me, um, or if you want to just wait until the end, you can answer me on that. Um, I will start by asking how many of you have a LinkedIn profile, just to kind of like have a notion. That's really nice. Um, that's a really good uh, amount of that actually have LinkedIn. So why join LinkedIn and why this platform is becoming so huge nowadays? I would just throw a few, a few numbers here. Like, honestly, um, 40, 400 million professionals use the platform um, from all over the industries. It doesn't matter if you're majoring in engineering, if you're majoring in, like, I don't know, accountancy, anything. Honestly, you can certainly feel free to use LinkedIn. It's a great platform, not only for network, but um, also, know how the, your industry is working, how other professionals are working, and how their journey looks like um, professionally speaking. They have over 150 industry, nearly 3 million active jobs, um, posting every single day. Some industries, they only post on LinkedIn, so that's a really good uh, resource for you guys to have by the time you're um, job hunting, or maybe you just want to keep up to date about the new trends in your industry. LinkedIn is a great platform for that. Um, executives from the Fortune 500 firms, they also have LinkedIn profiles there. Um, and honestly, UIC alumni, they also have a lot of information there. You can certainly reach them out if you want to know uh, more about their journey. By the end of the presentation, I'll show you guys a few resources um, about the alumni and how you can reach out to them. So, um, keep talking about LinkedIn and the purpose of it. So, honestly, you can do a lot of LinkedIn, you can network. Um, once again, you can know how the industry is working, how the trends are working in your field, or maybe if you, if you want to just explore other industries, um, you can certainly do that. Um, some people, they ask the difference between LinkedIn and resume. Honestly, like a resume is just a one-page document where you just from all your um, professional experience and your education and everything, but the LinkedIn is also like, it will be your profile as a social media, so you can actually develop more information on that. You can post things like maybe you're attending a, a fair, maybe you're doing a presentation, maybe you wrote an article. Those things you cannot actually include in your resume because you probably won't have the space to do so. Um, but the LinkedIn, as a social media, uh, for sure, you should keep everything up to date. And so if you're attending a course that you really like to, if you're participating in something that you think is interest for your career and it's um, just something that you want to share with your um, network on LinkedIn, you, you can use that and you should do that. So you can like corporate media, web links, depending on your major, depending on your field, you can uh, also uh, showcase your work. For example, some people, they have websites, for example, you can do that. Um, and it's just like a great tool to advertise yourself and showcase your abilities and the things that you can do in, in your career. So let's talk about like um, the, um, the professional photo and, and just the profile. And then we go section by section on LinkedIn. So, um, the professional photo is just like, let's try to cause a great impression at first, right? Because the first thing, um, by the time someone is searching for your name on LinkedIn, it will be your profile feature followed by your name and like your headline. So those things are the most important things of your LinkedIn because it's just the first impression that they have. And honestly, like, um, I think, and I hope it should go without saying that you should keep a business professional um, we don't want to see you at the beach, for example, or in a bikini or you're losing, right? Um, keep that for your Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. Um, please make sure that you keep a business profession, like a nice t-shirt, a blazer. Um, you can never go wrong with that. Um, make sure that you can actually see your face. Once again, that's a, a professional platform, so it shouldn't be like a group feature, for example. It should be just you and your professional feature on your profile. Um, the cover photo, honestly, there's no rule for that. Um, just keep in mind that it's a professional platform, so it can be like cities, landscape, maybe. Um, you can even showcase your field, for example. I've seen some um, profile of a photographer, for example, and the cover photo was like a picture of a camera. That makes sense, right? Um, or you can even create a banner. Um, here you can see how we can, oh, we can see, um, I can show you guys how to create a banner. Um, even if um, you want something from UIC for the customize, I personally do did that in my um, LinkedIn. I think it's just a nice little touch and it just looks nice in your um, profile. 
Um, so just make sure once again that everything's very professional, um, the business, a business casual thing, um, you can never go wrong with that. And the profile tips about your headlines, um, once again, let's try to think about those things in the most strategic way possible. Because it will be the first impression that someone will have by the time they are searching for your name. So um, think about it as a slogan, how you can advertise yourself, what are the things that you're doing right now. If you're majoring in something, what is your major, what is your minor. If you're currently seeking for something, just make sure to include that in your headline. Um, so for example, you can just um, say like, in this example, here they have an economic major and a spy financial analyst. So you can tell the person is currently seeking for something. Um, so make sure to think about those things the most strategically. Um, you can say actively seeking for some opportunity. You can say that you have experience with something. You can say that you're skilled in X, Y, Z things. So once again, try to think about all of those things and how you can showcase yourself by the time someone will search for your name on Black um, the summary is not something mandatory on LinkedIn, but certainly is a good thing to include. Um, it's basically a brief explanation of who you are, your aspirations, the things that you want to do as a professional. Um, the thing is, by the time you're doing that, you can think as a condensed version of a cover letter. Um, so a cover letter is just one page documents that you say like, oh, I have this experience, I have those interests, uh, my industry is this one. Um, so you can think about as a condensed version of a cover letter. And by the time you're doing that, by the time you're actually writing your summary, just make sure, once again, um, the, the first thing that people will actually see. Um, if you go to, to LinkedIn, I'll show you guys later that, um, in your summary section, they have like up to 2,000 characters, but only the 221st characters are the immediate thing that you can see in your computer. And if you're using the, the LinkedIn on your mobile, for example, you can only see 92 characters. So what are the most important things that you want to talk about yourself? So maybe um, the most important thing, they should come first, and then you can develop other um, abilities, other skills that you have. But once again, try to think about how you can showcase yourself. Because um, if I'm looking for your LinkedIn, for example, and I'm searching for you, maybe it's just a quick overview. I'm not going to read every single topic that you wrote at first. But if I, I start reading and I say, like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I'm curious about this person. So I would click the see more section. I would read everything more carefully. But the quick first look um, should call my attention in order to actually click the see more and read more carefully your profile. Um, in the experience section, honestly, you can just like copy and paste your resume, your bullet points in your resume, if you have that. Um, I do understand that some people, they, they cannot have a lot of bullet points in their resume, such as myself, just because you have more experiences and then you just like, I don't have enough space for that. If that's the case, certainly further develop those things in your LinkedIn, if they're not included in your resume, because you actually have the space to do so. Um, if you don't have a location or not of space on LinkedIn, so you should include as much as possible the information that you have. Um, so like dates and locations where you were working, for how long you were working, those things are important. Um, if you're an international student, for example, I, I certainly am, I could probably by my accent you can tell I'm not from here, um, you, you sh certainly should include where you were working and how long you were working. So in my case, I'm from Brazil, I was working in Rio, where I'm from for this amount of time, and now I'm working in the US for this amount of time. So just make sure to those informations, the companies, the industry, and actually explain the things that you are doing. I do know that part is not the easiest one because sometimes you're just like starting an internship um, and we actually don't really know what the things that you're doing. And I get it, you know, like your first internship, maybe you just don't really know. Um, you're just like, a lot of people are giving you many tasks and you don't actually know, but you can talk to them, you can talk to your colleagues and try to figure it out um, in the best way, the most professional way possible, using professional language of how you can showcase yourself and just like make the best of it, right? So uh, in terms of media, you you can and you should honestly upload um, your resume, for example, if you do have a professional website, depending on your industry, you might have that. Um, you certainly should include those things in your LinkedIn, um, because once again, you can actually showcase an advertise for yourself in your profile. Um, you can upload a PDF, Word, PowerPoint, whatever. And why we say that? Because think about it. 
maybe you're applying for an internship, or maybe you're not even applying for anything, but someone um, found you on LinkedIn, right? And they're just like, I think that person is a great match for this company. Um, I want to, I don't know, I want to send that to the, the HR manager. Um, just to kind of like see this profile. It's way easier to actually forward a PDF of a resume of someone than actually send the link of the, the LinkedIn profile of them. Um, so let's try to think about how we can optimize our chances to get something if that's something that you're pursuing at the moment. Um, go to the education section. Those things are kind of like the, the resume. Um, certainly include everything, so major, minor, if you have that. If you have like activities that you participate in your major, um, if you participate in some organizations, society, if you have like study abroad, if you speak more than one language, all those things should be included in your LinkedIn. Um, and for the development of your resume, so as for the education, honestly, it's kind of the same as the resume, you don't have to go crazy on that, um, but certainly include those things that you on like actual curricular activities and all of those things. Um, by the time of skills and endorsements, that's something that I particularly like to talk about because um, we do have those job skills. We all have those like um, kind of big words such as like teamwork, leadership, public speaking, all of those things. And you can um, showcase yourself and say, hey, I'm good at this. So um, you're my classmate, for example, you're a supervisor, for example, you work with me, you were my boss or something, and you can actually endorse this ability that I have. Um, by the time you're doing that, I just kindly ask you for all to think about, like, what are the things that you're actually good at, and what are the things that you can actually advertise, and you want to advertise for your industry, and what are the things that are most important for your field? Um, because I've seen people saying, like, I'm good at everything, maybe you are, um, I don't know. Um, but it shouldn't be like, oh, I'm good in everything and people are just endorsing me like your mom endorsing you in every single section of that. Please don't do that, you know, like try to um, get an endorsement for someone that actually knows your words, knows the thing that you are doing and can um, talk about yourself, you know, um, and things like that. So we do have this pro tip that we just say to try to choose the top three skills that you have. And, and like and ask the endorsements for those top three. And how you can choose that? Um, for me, for example, my major, like all of those things are different back in Brazil, but my major would be law. I'm a lawyer, so public speaking for sure is something that I should be good at. At least I hope I am. Um, so those are something that um, I should include in my top three skills, for example, and I should ask for a, a former boss, a former supervisor, or something like, hey, could you endorse me at this ability? Um, so try to think about your industry and the things that you're good at. And like the pro tip is just like choose the top three skills because even though you're super amazing in everything, I'm sure I'm sure that you might be better in like top three skills for example. Um, the same goes about recommendations. Um, you should certainly ask for those recommendations so you can see that in a LinkedIn profile of um, the recommendations to people that actually work with you. It could be your professor, it could be an advisor, it could be even your classmate, maybe you did some research together and they can actually recommend you. Um, and you can also like kind of trade those things, like give recommendations to get recommendations if you don't really have a lot of people to ask for. That's also something that you can think of. Um, and choose meaningful relationships, so managers, instructors, um, classmates that actually know how you work and supervisor and all of those things are great examples to give recommendations. And by the time you're doing that, think about people that can actually give you a good recommendation. I will share a personal example with you guys. Um, I remember asking for this professor. He worked with me throughout the entire law school. Back in Brazil, we have five years of law school, so he really knew me for a very long time. I was used to work with him since the first period of college. And I was just like, hey, can you give me a recommendation? I'm switching my LinkedIn and everything in English. And he's like, yeah, sure. You really like me, right? Uh, but by the time he actually wrote the recommendation, he was really bad. I <laughs> mean, he was really bad. Not because the recommendation itself was bad, just because the language, English, he was not, like, it is his best thing. He was thinking about Portuguese and trying to translate, and everything was really like nonsense, honestly. Like, even though I love him with all my heart, it wasn't the best recommendation that I could have gotten, right? So 
just try to make sure that actually the person that will give you the recommendation uh, will be someone that will give you a good recommendation and someone that is flexible enough to just like, oh, maybe we can edit a thing or two. Honestly, just like language and formatting and type of things, so just like that. Obviously, you don't want to say, like, say this about me. Obviously not. Um, but just make sure to, once again, try to think strategically about the people that you're engaging with to ask them for the things. Um, when it comes to the link and the URL, um, something that we, we say a lot is just like try to personalize this. Honestly, it takes like five seconds to do that. You can just like customize this link because by the time you create your profile, it just goes to this random link like, I don't know, Bruna, one, two, three, whatever, it's just really weird. So just make sure to, we have like how to do it, you can just click on your profile and then there's like add a public profile and URL, you can just like click there and the pencil icon and you can customize. So in my case, if you search for my name, like Bruna Pacello, you can see that. Um, so make sure to, to do that, your first and last name. And why we say that? Because it will be easier to search for you. So once again, we want to get noticed on LinkedIn because it is a networking platform. So how we can make it easier to people find us? Um, that's one great example how to do so. Because if it's just like your name, you will be the first thing that will pop up by the time you're researching for your name specifically. But if you're just like have those weird numbers, by the time you create a profile, certainly it will be hard for them to find. And who should I connect with? Honestly, those things are kind of personal. We can vary. I know people that only connect with um, other folks that are from their industry, people that, like me, honestly, anyone send a request, I would just accept. I don't even want to know like the industry. I would just accept because, honestly, we never know. Maybe it's not obvious that an engineer or a person from law are having a, a connection on LinkedIn, but maybe at some point this can work. For example, I used to work with administrative law. We, was, we used to have like a lot of concessions with a lot of engineering um, companies and all of those things with construction, for example. So maybe it's not that obvious, this connection, but actually a lawyer and an engineer can get along the LinkedIn and you can help each other um, in some extent. So you can connect with your supervisors, um, currently past supervisors, um, employees, students, advisors, um, and any other people that you can think of. Me, for example, I connect with anyone. Um, the only thing that we do say, by the time you're connecting with family and friends, make sure that they actually know that this is a professional platform. Because sometimes um, you can just see some friends and you're just like, oh my god, you're so amazing, you're beautiful. Like, thank you, but <laughs> it is a professional um, network and platform. So those type of comments should be in different platforms and not LinkedIn for sure. Um, and by the time you, you send a connection request, something that is really good and something that I personally do, um, you can personalize your invitation. So by the time you send a connection request, it will pop up like, do you want to send a message also? So maybe I want to connect with you and I can say, hey, I saw you um, in this workshop. I'm Bruna, I was a presenter. Like, they will know who I was by the time I'm just like introducing myself. You don't have to write a whole paragraph or like one or two lines. Um, it's just kind of like, oh, that's me and that's how I found you. And they can certainly read that and they're like, okay, more open to accept your invitation, um, your connection request. And once again, we want to think about LinkedIn as your own brand and how you can expand the image. So keep everything up to date and it's really so, um, I do understand that some people, they don't like to post a lot. I get it. I don't really post a lot on LinkedIn. I saw a lot of posts that are just like, oh my god, that's the 10th post of this person of the day. I do get that. If you want to post a lot, that's fine. If not, it's also okay. But just make sure that your experiences, your skills, and your abilities are up to date. You don't have to um, post frequently, but those things should be in your profile always up to date. Um, share your work, so if you're attending this workshop, if you're in school, something that is meaningful for your work, for your um, career, certainly share those things, you know. There's no such thing as the right post. You should post anything that you feel comfortable with and something that makes sense for your career. 
Um, and another thing about LinkedIn is that active users are prioritizing search results. So by the time you're like actually engaging with the platform, even if I'm just commenting on your post, like I'm liking and loving your, your post or something, those things are like engaging. So by the time I'm doing that, you can see the activities of this person. And active users, they are prioritizing search results. So once again, we want to be seen, right? We want to be noticed on LinkedIn. So those things are really important by the time you're not only creating your profile, but actually using and engaging with the platform. We do have the LinkedIn don'ts. Yeah, we really hope those things are kind of like obvious. <laughs> um, questionable profile features like, alas, oh, for a surfer or something, like a professional surfer, we once again don't want to see you wearing a bikini or like a tank top, whatever. Um, so make sure everything is very professional. Um, those things actually send an image of who you are as a professional. So make sure that um, everything is accordant with the flag. The writing style, you don't have to be extremely formal in your post or anything, but make sure that you don't have typo mistakes or the language is way too informal. Um, those things are very important too. And when you talk about not being negative, um, just honestly, like we can all have a past experience that we were not the biggest fans of, and that's fine, that's life, you know, you won't always love the thing that you're doing, and that's okay. But I shouldn't be able to tell that you hated your job. You know, so make sure to once again keep the language professional and positive. Um, it's something that actually tells a lot about you as a professional. Um, not keeping things up to date because once again we want to um, engage with the platform and we want to be seen and people should know the things that we're currently doing. So keep everything up to date, it is really important. Um, and using LinkedIn like any other social media, you want to keep it professional and relevant. Obviously, LinkedIn is not the same as Instagram. Uh, so just make sure to use the platform for the purpose that it is. So we can also find the jobs on LinkedIn. I mentioned that in the beginning of the presentation. So it is a great tool to find like internships, full-time positions. Um, honestly, anything that you might be looking for, they probably have that um, on LinkedIn. So you can use those features like Easy Apply. It's basically the one that it has in like a, I don't know how to say that. But it's basically one that you can say like Easy Apply and you just upload your resume and it's very quick. Um, those are my favorite, honestly. And Early Apply, you can also do that. Um, I mean, LinkedIn is just an, any other app, so you can download that in your cell phone and you can just way easier. They send a lot of notifications, not only through the platform, but also on email. So you can have both things going on there. So um, make sure that you check both of them. And like strategy that we say, like you can also find jobs by following um, employees' profiles. And, that, and that's basically why um, some people, they, some companies, they don't um, want to pay for those advertisements because those job posts, they are paid. They're not free. But their employees will probably share that information. So maybe I work with recent I know for a fact that they don't pay for that, but I know there's a, a, a vacancy open there. I can post that, and you will only know about this opportunity because you follow me, right? So make sure that, okay, there are like those companies that I'm super fan, I really want to know everything that's going on with them. Make sure to follow the employers that work there because they can actually share information that maybe won't be available on LinkedIn or maybe won't be available um, on their own website. So keep those things in mind and very important by the time your job comes. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. So as you can see here, you can see only four lines. And that's what I was talking about when you can actually see those things as a first thing when you're like in your laptop or something. But by the time you click see more here, you can actually see the whole description that she, she wrote here for her summary. So that's why we say like, let's try to think about the most meaningful and relevant thing that we want to share in our summary. Because people, by the time they're just clicking on your profile, that will be the first thing, the first thing that they will see. Um, so if it's just like someone quickly seeing your profile, they'll probably just read those first four sentences. So make sure that um, you actually include the most relevant and meaningful things for your um, career and purpose. And by the time you click there to see more, if I want to get more information about you, I'll be able to see that. 